Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. Now in this video, we'll be looking at that how you can make your previews while you're working with Swift data. So if you remember when we were working with the budget detail screen, we kind of commented out, well, not kind of, we did, we did comment it out the preview section. And the reason that we commented out the preview section is when we are creating the budget detail screen, which is right over here, this particular view, we need to be able to pass in the budget. But the question then comes that, well, how do we create the budget? So if I go over here and I simply go and create a budget like this and passing in the budget with a certain name of the budget and some sort of a you know, price of the budget or limit of the budget, uh, you'll see that the preview doesn't really work still. And the reason that the preview is not really working is because inside the budget details screen, we want this budget to be a special budget coming from the core data or coming from Swift data, in other words, right? Swift data is built on top of core data, so it's the same thing. Okay. So how can we make sure that the preview works? Well, in this case, I can go ahead and say model context and I can add a context over here. But when I add a context over here, or in this case, a container over here, what I really want to do is in that container, I also want to add some budget items, which may or may not also contain transactions. So I want to generate or add some data already available for the preview to work. And that data should only be available for the in-memory. I don't really want to persist it. I just want to use it in the Xcode previews. So there's no need for persistence in our case. So how can we do that? Well, let's go ahead and get started with creating our preview container, okay? Now, the preview container, I'm going to put it inside the preview content folder. So that this means that this is content or whatever files are added to the preview content are only available for the preview. They're not really part of the deployment. So let's go ahead and add something. I'm going to say Swift file. And I will simply call this preview container. Okay. Let's go ahead and first import Swift data. That's the first thing. And now I can go ahead and create this property called preview container, which will be type of model container. Now, this particular property and the implementation, I kind of took from one of the videos of WWDC. Uh, so, you know, it will be very similar to that. We're also going to go ahead and use the main actor. So this means that this particular property, when you're accessing it, it will be accessed, everything will be accessed on the main queue. And inside over here, we will get the container. We'll create our container, all right? So we'll have a do, and we will have a uh, catch somewhere. So we'll have a catch over here. So we'll create a container. Now, this is, the con this is a container that we are creating only for the purpose of the previews to work. So we'll create this container for a budget and with some configurations. So we'll simply pass in the type budget.self. And you might be wondering that, okay, why didn't I pass in the type for transaction? Because we do have a transaction over here. Well, the reason I didn't really pass in the transaction is because if you pass in the budget, budget already contains the relationship for the transaction. So the Swift data is going to automatically find out the transaction type also. So you don't really have to pass in all the types that you're using unless they are completely independent. Now for the configuration, I'm going to use uh, the model configuration. And now I can use in memory. In memory true means that the data that the preview, Xcode previews is going to write, it will only be for uh, the memory. It's not going to be persisted anywhere. In the catch, we're just going to go ahead and throw the error. If you are not able to save the data, then that's the error we're gonna throw, okay? And we also need to return the container. Return the container. 
Now, there are other stuff that we need to do. Right now, the container, make sure that you call this particular function that we're calling. Okay, so right now, what we're doing is we are creating our preview container and we are returning it. But that particular container doesn't really contain anything. I mean, there is no sample data in there. So what we can do is we can create sample data, all right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and create another struct with the name sample data, which is going to simply create some budgets. Budget name will be budget zero, budget, budget one, budget two, budget three, and so on. And that is going to create us some budget items. For each budget item, I also want to create a transaction. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go over here with the sample data, dot budgets, dot enumerated, dot for each. And the reason I'm using enumerated is because I also want to access the index apart from the budget, which is the item in the budgets array. So I'll get the index, I will also get the budget. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and add this to the main context. Main context dot insert and the particular budget. So the budget is inserted into the context. And that's a very important step that the budget is now inserted into the context. Now we can create a transaction and add that transaction. So I'll create a transaction with some dummy data. And then I will set that this transaction dot budget is equals to the budget. And I will also create the other side of the relationship, which is budget dot add transactions. And uh, let's see if we have that function that we can call transaction over here. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so what this is going to do is going to go over our sample budgets, which is created using the struct over here and the budgets property that we have. It's going to simply create some hard coded list of budgets. This is only used for the Xcode preview, so that's fine. And then it's going to add some transactions to it. So every budget will have a couple of transactions, a couple of nodes and whatnot. And then we will create this relationship. Now let's go back to our detail screen. So if we go to the detail screen, now we should be able to use this. But how do we use the budget detail screen? I mean, the first thing is that even if I try to do this, I mean, how am I going to get the data in there? I, I can't really go over here and create a query or something like that, right? So one of the ways that you can solve this problem is to create some sort of a container view. We'll create a container view. I'll call it budget detail container view, which is view. There we go. And this will have some information, query var budgets, budget. So it's an array of budget. And in the body, because this is really a view and nothing else, we'll also go ahead and create a navigation stack. And the container view will be responsible for implementing the budget detail screen. But this time we actually have the budgets. So I can simply take the budget at the zeroth location or the zeroth index and display it. And in the preview, we are going to simply go ahead and say budget detail screen or budget detail container view. That is what we are going to implement. Now, if I run this, it builds successfully, but let's see if the preview shows us that one particular budget item. It kind of crashed, okay. So why did it crash? Well, the reason it crashed is that when we're trying to create this bottle budget detail container view, it doesn't even have a model container. So let's go ahead and add the model container, which will be the preview container. All right, so this is the fake stuff that we created. But the preview container is only accessible asynchronously or on the main actor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say main actor. And now you can see the budget. Cool, right? I mean, you do get the warning over here. Now, this warning, unfortunately, since we're still using the earlier version of Xcode 15, 
there's no way to get rid of this particular warning at least that i know of uh, but we're just going to make sure that this warning is is fine over here for now and eventually this is a bug and it will hopefully uh, go away all right but the good thing is that we are actually able to see uh, the budgets over here and so we are looking at budget on item number zero it's kind of weird i thought that on it keeps on changing for some reason i'm not sure why it uh, keeps on changing the number i mean if i go over here and say three i was expecting that it should always return me the same item so that is for the preview container to decide i guess uh, we're mapping it we're going through it um so it should only give you like five items all right the note is basically the index whatever the index is and that's what we're doing now when we are trying to retrieve the items which is right over here the items can be retrieved in any order so that is the reason that sometimes you see budget number five and other times you see budget number four and three and two so it's not like it's always going to be budget number one or zero or one or two in that sequence, all right? But for, for us, just to be able to create a preview, that is great because now we can actually see how it will look like. So even if you're using core data or Swift data, you can still look at the previews, which is amazing, which really helps you because now you can definitely see that how your user interface is going to behave and it's going to look like all right so that's it for this video hopefully you can use the same technique for your other views uh, this is a good technique this is basically using a container view because you can't simply copy this query and inside the preview it's not going to work so that is why we use help or we took help from the container view to, to create this. All right. So thank you so much. Make sure to like and make sure to subscribe. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my course on Swift data. This is a brand new course. It already has close to 188 students. This is a course. I am keep on adding items to this course. So right now you can learn about the new changes in Swift UI state management. You can also get started with Swift data, debugging Swift data, one-to-many relationship, many-to-many -many relationship, and also understanding the queries. So it's a lot of stuff already there, but obviously we will be learning a, a lot more about how to use Swift data in upcoming weeks and even months. So thank you so much. Check out the link right there in the YouTube description. And thank you so much. Please share the video, like it, subscribe it. Thank you so much.